Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today, looking at permadeath, medical gameplay, and death of a spaceman. 2.0, I suppose? What's been discussed recently about how the mechanics have evolved since the conception of the persistent universe. Currently in Star Citizen, when you die, you respawn and you can easily reclaim your ship. Bam! There's no real risk to dying. I suppose you could argue that if you've got a cargo ship full of loot at the moment, that dying or getting disconnected, which is probably more of a problem, can cause you to lose a large haul of uh, eff effectively money and assets that um, you can't get back. Um, but there are going to be resets in the future, at least in the short to medium term. So at the moment, nothing's really lost and you can get straight back into the game. There's no huge risk in dying. This is not going to always be the case though. In fact, they want to have permadeath in game. But don't worry, although that is a scary sounding thing and you're going to want to avoid it, it isn't game over. You don't lose all your stuff. You're not going to lose all of your real world money's worth of ships either. The goal of Death of the Spaceman mechanics is to give consequences to dying in game and have that risk help drive player actions and the economy. Getting out of a risky situation or completing a goal should give you a sense of accomplishment and a story to tell. Competing with other players for various things and potentially other NPCs for various things, bounty hunting or for fighting over territory or resources, that's going to be a big part of the game. And Chris compares Dark or Demon Souls to uh, the type of death versus risk and reward that they want to sort of capture in Star Citizen. That sort of, well, it's quite dangerous and I could die versus, well, there's quite a good reward and a payoff if I do do this. This will cause players to plan for missions and encounters, to repair their ship, consider their loadouts. The time between missions will have players visiting hospitals or shops, making sure they've got all the right gear, and medical gameplay is going to be very important. Players should be able to identify more with their character and feel a sense of fear, as well as trying to be more prepared. They're not going to sort of like not read a mission description uh, after you've done that once and gone. Well, I probably died because I didn't read the mission description. Um, you'll probably do that once and then be a mo much more prepared for the future. When you permadie, you'll create another character as your next of kin, and they will inherit your old character's stuff. But there will be a death tax. Your reputation and assets will pass down, but not all of them. With reputation, that means you won't get a clean slate. The sins of the father, they kept on mentioning. But it will degrade with all parties, so if you had a uh, really good re reputation with the pirates um, and they were like friendly with a, a pirate faction in an area and the UE hated you, well, the UE would hate you slightly less and the pirates would like you slightly less um, or, or a bit less. You will be able to die and be brought back a good few times though before permanent death of that character. These mechanics have evolved somewhat as well over several years. So let's talk about the current thinking. You're going to have a certain amount of lives or times you can die and some deaths will be worse than others and will be more damaging to your character's life force or DNA as they call it. Sometimes you'll be able to be rescued or got back up. That won't have too much uh, in the way of lingering effects. Well, you could have some lingering effects if you've been wounded in a particular way uh, or you've got like um, particularly badly damaged um, area of your body, your arms broken or something like that. That's a possibility, but you won't have lo lost one if you're like proper lives. There may be gene therapy or ways of getting back lives later that you'll pay for at uh, hospitals or for treatment elsewhere. Wear and tear and kind of aging will be a thing on characters. You're going to accrue damage, battle scars and effectively age from getting injured. And as I said, some of that will be treatable, some of it not so much. There are three types of death states and down states that they have. One, just being downed, your health is at zero, you're on the floor bleeding out, but someone can come and get you back up or stabilize you. You'll be able to choose to respawn if you don't want to wait or you don't think you're going to be saved or caught back up. Security forces might be able to save you. You might be able to purchase services to come and rescue you if you're downed. Your friends might come and save you. Maybe you can get drones or something in the future that will medi um, out of your ship, just remote and come and pick you up and bring you back. This can still leave you with wounds that need to be treated though, but you can otherwise be got back up, whether that be temporarily. Uh, you're not um, respawning, basically. The second sort of state is respawning. If no one is coming to your aid or you bleed out entirely, you'll have to respawn. This basically is a clone from EVE Online. 
You've got a clone of yourself in a hospital and you will spawn back there and you'll be able to go back to where you died, see your body and loot it if it hasn't been moved or, or the loot hasn't been taken. Three, the third death state is permadeath. If you die and respawn too many times, then your character will be permanently dead and you'll have to pass on that assets to their next of kin. They are working on down states and getting that into the actor status system currently. We do currently have stun damage and the ability to have a character knocked out at the moment and you can sort of drag them occasionally. But they're also working on spawning at hospitals at the moment as well. They're going to be introducing actor status version 1 in the future. And this will have drugs giving you buffs, debuffs, treating statuses and healing. You're going to have a um, drug blood level uh, as well. So you can't just um, take loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of drugs. You will literally overdose. There is going to be a medical gun that um, we've actually seen them working on. These are a stronger sort of version of Medipens. And Medipens are going to become more of a quick fix and stabilize. They don't really give you health back or cure you fully. But they let you get back on your feet at least briefly. When in a down state, you might want to um, have your body dragged to safety. Or get to uh, uh, an area to... For treatment so someone drags you back to a cutlass red or something or they might jab you with a medipen get you back on your feet and then take you somewhere for treatment you could get an injury to your arm that's a fracture so like more minor damage then that leads to a fracture and um you, you would really need to go and have that treated at a medical facility otherwise you're going to have a debuff related to that and if you take more damage to that area it could become a lot worse you could have a entirely broken bone uh, a crippled or destroyed limb the treatment cost and time needed to heal will be directly related to the amount of damage and type of damage taken. Some damage or status effects might be able to be fixed by a field medic or just items that you might have on yourself. Others will require at least a med bay of a ship and others more advanced facilities. There will be a large range of damage for individual body parts and limbs ranging from minor to destroyed and typically it will be progressive that type of damage. You are going to have the opportunity really to understand you've been injured you could disengage and go home and heal or you could choose to stay out and push on and risk it for potentially more reward there are going to be lots of different damage types and lots of different treatments for those as well when you visit a hospital or medical clinic you're going to be able to basically upload or download your dna into the uh, medical facility there that you want to spawn at and that will be setting it as your spawn point you basically have a clone there one of the other side effects of spawning as a clone is that you might have inherited some of the injuries from your previous character so maybe you've taken a load of damage and you have a prosthetic arm now and um, it's sort of showing that your character is taken a lot of damage and um, that you are getting closer to permadeath and um, you might have a different eye color so some of these things are basically there to um, show that your stability of your dna is um, degrading but they could be quite minor things or they might be something that you go oh actually this is this is uh this is bad i've got a whole new set of legs uh, also respawning in medical facilities may carry a reasonable cost to them at all the stages players are incentivized to stay alive or at least get rescued rather than respawn there will be a death or inheritance tax that players will want to avoid if their character permanently dies the reputation of the character as i said earlier will degrade with all the groups that they had reputation with so if you were a bounty hunter you might have lost a load of reputation with the bounty hunters guild um so um, it isn't necessarily all bad, though, with reputation loss, because, um, as I said, if you were a big old criminal and the UE hated you, well, they might not dislike you so much. But sins of the father, they are going to dislike you at least a little bit. Being in a group, being in a safer part of space, they are genuine considerations. If you're with a group, well, then they can get you up themselves and help you. Um, if you are in safer parts of space, well, you're less likely to, you know, go down and get injured. But you've got to weigh that up with potentially less reward um, with that risk. This also ties into physical storage with this gameplay. What gear are you going to bring along with you? Do you have enough food and drink or facilities to make food and drink? Obviously, you can sort of starve to death or um, be thirsty to death, dehydrate to death. There seems to be plans to have support armor and items that will help as well. So you could be like a field medic and um, with support armor, you might have your medigun charging more quickly, for example. They want players to be able to play the game as medic 
medics and as search and rescue pilots and services. The medical and death of a spaceman mechanic are a collection really though of a lot of elements coming together. They want Star Citizen to be more of a virtual life type simulator with lots of gameplay opportunities and it's gonna be well beyond 2021 before all of those elements merge into something that they want into the, the full death of a spaceman and medical gameplay. They are pushing to do it with Chris saying, we see the matrix, it's just not done yet. These mechanics are very much gonna be stepped over time. So you're gonna see bits and bits and bits and bits of them um, over the next few patches. So when are we getting this? Well, they're building some of the prerequisites and supporting features for Death of the Spaceman at the moment, medical gameplay, eye cache, but they are actively developing Death of the Spaceman mechanics now. This will have um, them testing various ideas and building towards the tier zero implementation. That will then be further iterated on. There are a lot of features that will be coming online for this in 2021. However, there's loads more to do beyond that. Body dragging was the first part of these new mechanics, or at least one that ties into it. But the short and mid-term goals for this is hospital and medical gameplay locations are coming next. That's basically selling those areas as your save point and being able to buy more medical items. The actor status system tier one with drugs that you'll be able to use, um, like stims and black market drugs and alcohol to getting drunk, uh, blood drug level, and that's all part of that that will be coming after hospitals. So basically as well you can't just keep on using drugs that's dangerous as i said earlier you could overdose and um you will need reviving if that happens also reviving a character from a down state will be part of this too which opens up a huge world of gameplay in my opinion but also at the same sort of time they want physicalized inventories to come into um, player bodies will not be like despawning so rescuing them or looting them is very viable options but what do you think if you don't like some of these ideas, then it's probably worth voicing your opinion in a civil and constructive way, or at least saying, well, these are things that I'm worried about. This is something I want to avoid. I like this idea. I don't like this bit. For example, I want to know that people can't pad ram assassinate another player in safe space and cause their character to be permanently dead. I'd have sort of like green zones and safer areas and safer systems pretty much immune from you losing a life if you are a lawful player. Actually, potentially, even if you're a criminal player in those areas too, you just go to prison for a long time. You'd go to an area or another system where it would be much more dangerous while you're in prison as well. So there's lots of things they could do to get around a lot of this stuff. Mechanics they could put in game to make sure that a lot of these uh, issues are addressed. My concerns would also be uh, players making danger characters and alts for, well, yeah, uh, as I said earlier, pad ramming, assassinating someone. They could go, well, it doesn't matter if I pad ram them with my Aurora character because, well, I permanently die, I create another character, haven't really lost anything. My main character just lives in the safest place in the verse on like Terra, for example, but my alts have nothing beyond what I've given them from my main character, and that's to minimize any taxes if they die. Now, that could be seen as just a way of minimaxing, but it could also be seen as an exploit, and um, it depends on the way they want these systems to work. What if my would-be attacker damns me, then keeps me alive, and damages more parts of my body to maximize trauma? So, based on how the mechanics are going to work, well, you could do some pretty nasty things to players. I don't think these things are actually stuff to worry about at this stage, as I do believe that Cloud Imperium will address them, but they are certainly things to talk about, identify, theorycraft about, and to draw attention to in at least some way. But I'd love to know what you think. Do you like these ideas? Do you hate them? Do you have any suggestions? Is this too much like EVE Online? Is that a bad thing? Does this seem like a sensible way of respawning? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Each month we have a ship giveaway for November. We are giving away a Mercury Star Runner again. This highly anticipated multi-roll ship is going to be great for small to medium-sized crews that want to do uh, a bit of everything, whether that be cargo running, data running, missions, combat, smuggling, all that sort of jazz. And it's going to be in-game and flyable very soon. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during October, including this one. More details down below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money in your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. 
All I know is that it does. And that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows. And I use it, and maybe you should too. What am I shilling?